today I'm going to be talking about this uh, paper called Product Development with Lurking Patentees. This is a joint work with Eric Hovenkamp, who is at USC, and John Turner, who is at the University of Georgia. So the idea of this paper is to uh, try to think about what happens when a developer is trying to bring a new product into the market. And the concern of the developer always is there is going to be some uncertainty because there are so many patents out there that maybe there is some component of this product that is infringing on, um, on a patent. So when a de developer is thinking about what kind of technology used in its product, it's always going to be evaluating technologies in a risk and reward uh, type of um, evaluation. So the risk here is the risk of patent infringement, and the value is that some technologies may be more valuable than others. So the, uh, the point of this paper is that patentees uh, sometimes approach developers for licenses. Give me one second, let me do this thing again. Ah, there you can see it. Um, so patentees sometimes approach developers for licenses, and this happens before the product uh, is actually on the market. So these are called ex-ante patent transactions. So prior to the investment by the developer in one of the technologies. Uh, but sometimes patentees do not approach developers. They show up later once the product is selling on the market and they sue developers for infringement. These are called exposed transactions. So we, what we want to bring uh, to the table with this paper is that the decision of when to license, whether I want to approach the developer ex-ante or exposed, is a strategic decision by the patent holder. So the risk of infringement is actually not exogenous because the patentee can strategically decide when to, when to show up. So let me give you a couple of uh, the, the common rhetoric that seems to point that showing up late uh, hold up is actually something that the patent holder would always want to do. So for example, this is an article that says that patent trolls sit around while others independently develop and build technology. The troll can jump then uh, out from under a bridge and demand payment for work it had nothing to do with. Okay, so this is the classic story of holdup. Uh, there are some re other recent papers that kind of discuss the idea that maybe ex post transactions is actually good. So what we investigate in this paper is precisely this intuition that um, but patent, patent uh, holders want to show up late and, and, and held up the developer. So uh, the, the first question we ask is under what conditions actually there are incentives for a patent holder to lurk? Right? And by lurking, we mean strategically delaying enforcement. And then we examine the consequences of lurking in technology adoption and, and by, by the developer, okay? So let me give you the key trade-off. This is a very simple paper. And hopefully if you get this key trade-off, you would get the main insight of the paper. So the, the, if the patentee approach is ex-ante, then the uncertainty about infringement is gonna be resolved for the developer. And this is gonna enable efficient bargaining over a license. Approaching exposed uh, is uh, better for the patent holder because uh, it creates this holdup problem and that weakens the bargaining position of the developer. So approaching late is good for the patent holders in terms of negotiating higher licenses. However, if, and this is gonna depend on, on the environment, if the developer is afraid that once I adopt a technology that is risky, there will show up, a, a patentee will show up and I'm gonna have to pay really high licenses in the future, I might not choose that technology because it's too risky. So in that case, showing up late, the patentee runs the risk of ending, ending up with nothing because the technology it's uh, claiming uh, to protect is not gonna be adopted. Okay, so uh, what we are gonna do is we're gonna develop a model where we are gonna show under what conditions the trade-off result in an ex-ante uh, licensing or exposed licensing. Okay, so the model is uh, fairly simple. We have a downstream firm, the developer, and it's gonna choose 
one of two possible technologies. This choice uh, we model as an irreversible choice. Uh, results are gonna be similar if you assume that there is a cost for redesigning the product, making it irre irreversible just uh, uh, simplifies the math. And uh, these this two technologies is, uh, one is gonna be technology A, this is safe. And by this, we mean it's in the public domain <clears throat> and for sure doesn't infringe. Again, this is a simplification. We can assume that we have different technologies with different levels of risk, but this simplifies the, the model. And technology B is a, a novel technology that returns a higher payoff if implemented, but it's risky. And by risk, we mean there is some probability that there is some patent holder out there with a patent for this uh, covering that technology. And the key feature of this model is that the patentee doesn't really know if there is a patent holder out there. That's the uncertainty. Maybe I'm going to adopt this technology and nobody will show up. So I, the prior belief is that with probability lambda, there is some patent holder out there uh, protecting uh, with a patent protecting technology B. And the patentee in the baseline model is informed about the developer's intentions to either use technology A or technology B. So the patentee has this private information. If, if there is a patentee, knows what the developer is gonna do, and then strategically is gonna decide to either approach or not approach, okay? So the patentee chooses to, if the patentee chooses to approach, that means the patentee is gonna uh, approach the developer before the developer makes any uh, sunk investments and they are gonna negotiate a license um, prior uh, to the technology choice. Now, alternatively, the patentee can choose to lurk. So it's going to, it's gonna know what the developer is, is thinking, maybe it's gonna implement my technology. I'm gonna hope that the developer chooses technology B and infringes on my patent and then I'm gonna show up and sue for patent infringement. The developer has to choose what to do. Uh, and there are, there are two cases. If the developer is approached ex ante, there is gonna be a Nash bargaining negotiation. Uh, and this Nash bargaining negotiation is gonna be efficient. So we are gonna end up using technology B because technology B is superior to technology A. Uh, but alternatively, and this is a kind of difficult problem for the developer, what happens if I'm not approached? So if I'm not approached, I have to form a belief on what's the probability that I will be approached, taking into account that either there is no patent holder, that's why I was not approached, or if there is one patent holder is lurking strategically and it's gonna show up later. Uh, so although this is a very simple economic model, I think what we bring uh, here with this model is, is exactly this idea of forming a belief. I love, a lot of the literature, takes this um, kind of as given, or some papers assume that the developer is surprised, exposed, uh, but you know, in a, in a rational model, the developer should not be surprised, you actually should actually form a belief about the probability that is gonna be held up by a patent holder in the future. And actually this belief turns out to be, to be crucial for, for the results of the model, okay? So here are the payoffs. Um, technology A is, as I mentioned before, safe. It's in the public domain. So there is no infringement risk and it's gonna deliver a payoff or a profit of one minus rho hat times pi. Technology B is better. Uh, it's gonna deliver a profit of pi, but of course it's risky. So this parameter rho bar, uh, we wanna interpret it as the incremental value of this technology B relative to A, okay? So if, if rho bar is very low, there is not a lot of incremental value. A is similar to B. If, if rho is very, very large, close to one, then technology B is much better than technology A, okay? So the parties are gonna negotiate um, if the patentee approaches uh, before the developer has made a choice, the parties are gonna negotiate according to Nash bargaining under complete information. The developer can, in this negotiation, can threaten to adopt the safe technology. Uh, however, this, 
this threat is not always credible. It could be that technology B is so much better than technology A that it's actually um, not credible that the developer is going to adopt this uh, weaker technology A. Okay, so that's going to depend on uh, precisely on this row bar. What's the difference in profits that the firm gets from adopting A or B? And this negotiation is always under the threat of litigation. So if we don't agree on a license today and the developer adopts technology B, uh, then the patent holder can always sue, okay? And uh, the patent is gonna be found valid and infringed in court with some probability. And in that case, there is a royalty rate R that the developer is gonna have to pay. So the patentee is gonna receive R times pi from this lawsuit. And we're going to work in terms of notation, we're going to go with work with this expected royalty rate, which is theta times r. This just simplifies the notation. So once we solve this uh, standard Nash bar gaining under complete information, there are going to be some payoffs that uh, the patentee and the developer receive, which depend this parameter on the ex uh, expected royalty rate row. OK. So what happens if the patentee lurks? Well, there are two cases. Um, if the developer chooses the safe technology, the game ends, the, the developer is not gonna be able to collect anything because there is no infringement. Uh, the patentee is gonna get one minus row bar times pi. Sorry, the developer gets one minus row bar, bar times pi and the patentee gets zero. Uh, however, if the developer chooses B and the patentee is lurking, then the patentee is gonna show up and is gonna sue and we're gonna negotiate an exposed license under the threat of litigation. The main difference here is that because the technology choice is irreversible, uh, the developer is not gonna be able to threaten to switch to technology A in case the patent holder is uh, charging a license that is too high. So that's precisely the whole that problem. Okay, so this uh, little graph here is the classic game uh, that maybe you have seen in your game theory uh, course. So at the center of the graph here is nature. Nature is gonna determine whether or not there is a patentee. So with probability lambda, there is a patentee. With probability one minus lambda, there is no patentee. If the patentee chooses to approach, then firms are gonna negotiate uh, Nash bar gaining um, according to Nash bargaining, and they receive this payoff. If the patentee approaches, uh, decides to lurk, sorry, the developer is going to be on this part of the game. So on, the, on this um, dashed um, information set, the developer is, has not been approached. So he's going to think, well, I'm either on this node down here. Down here means that I was not approached because actually there is no patentee. Or maybe I'm going to be up here. Uh, and I, I was not approached because the patentee is out there and it's lurking, okay? So this uh, belief Lambda had that the, there is a patentee that is lurking, that's gonna be part of, of an equilibrium object, okay? So what is the equilibrium concept? So in this game, we need to use, um, or we use perfect Bayesian equilibrium. So what the perfect Bayesian equilibrium specifies the, the belief that uh, conditional on not being approached, there is actually a patentee lurking. And the probability that the developer is going to choose the safe option, conditional on that belief, and the probability that the patentee is going to approach the developer ex ante. Okay? And the belief has to satisfy base rule. This is very standard uh, PDE concept. Okay? So now let me quickly describe the results the results are gonna be given in terms of this expected royalty rate row. And they are gonna be three different uh, areas where there is qualitatively different things happening. First between zero and row bar, it's what we call the must adopt equilibria. Between row bar and row bar over lambda, this middle region, there is gonna be what we are gonna call here ignoring patterns. And between row bar over lambda and one, there is gonna be a hold up equilibrium, okay? So let me tell you what happens in each one of these regions. And the intuition is actually very simple, but um, let, me, let me explain it anyway. So 
Let's start with the must adopt equilibrium. This is where the expected royalty rate is relatively low. So what happens here is that, remember that this row bar is the incremental value of technology B. So this is saying that the expected royalty rate is lower than the incremental value of technology B. So that means in an ex ante negotiation, it's actually not credible for the developer to threaten to adopt the safe technology in case of not agreeing on a license because adopting the technology B is actually strictly dominant. So here, uh, what happens is that the, the patentee knows that the developer doesn't have a credible threat. So it doesn't matter. Uh, the patentee is always going to, uh, the developer is always going to adopt technology B. So that means from the point of view of approaching now or approach, approaching late, later, it doesn't matter. There is no risk of, of uh, the developer choosing technology A because it's dominant to choose B. So the patentee is actually indifferent between approaching now or approaching later. And that means we, we have a multiplicity of equilibria, but they are all payoff equivalent in which the developer always adopts B and then uh, maybe the patentee show ups later, later or show ups ex ante, it doesn't matter, it doesn't make a difference. Then we have a region where the expected royalty rate now is higher than the incremental value, but it's actually lower than this threshold uh, row bar over lambda. So in this region, actually, it's optimal for the patentee to lurk for sure. The patentee doesn't wanna give up. It's a strategic advantage and it wants to hold up the developer if possible. Why? Because still that in this region, is no risk, there is no risk for the patent holder. Uh, the reason is that here, the developer would like to negotiate ex ante because negotiating ex ante is actually gonna give a better bargaining position uh, for, uh, to the developer because here, threatening to adopt technology A is actually credible. However, um, uh, still, if the, if, if the patentee doesn't show up, still the patent holder is willing to risk it because the amount that you have to pay exposed is not so large. So um, adopting this uh, technology B in this region is an acceptable risk for the patentee, mean, meaning that the patentee will adopt B. And if there is a patent a holder, the patent holder is gonna show up exposed because here is profitable to lurk. And we are gonna end up in a situation where the, the, there is exposed license. And in, in this region, this captures a little bit this intuition in the you know, paper by Lemley in 2008, um, ignoring patents where it says that technology companies generally instruct engineers not to read patents, adopt policies of ignoring initial demand letters and choose not to substitute non-infringing redesigns, okay, until litigation is lost, okay? Um, so I think uh, what this region is capturing is that it's, it's actually that intuition in the article that says uh, patent trolls wanna lurk and then show up and, and collect royalties. This is exactly what happens. But that's not all the story because what happens when the royalty rate is really large, this is what that intuition in the article is actually not capturing. In this case, lurking for sure is not gonna be an equilibrium. Why not? Because um, if, if the patentee is, uh, for example, if the patentee approaches for sure, that's also not gonna be an equilibrium. So a lurking for sure or approaching for, for sure will not be an equilibrium. What happens if the patentee approach for sure? If the patentee is always approaching, when the developer is not approached, the developer knows that there is no patentee because if there were a patentee, the patentee would be approaching. So then if not approached, the developer chooses technology B because now it's risk-free. However, if the technology is choosing technology B, now the patentee doesn't want to approach for sure, would like to deviate to actually lurk. So uh, approaching for sure is not an equilibrium. Similarly, if the patentee lurks for sure, if the developer now in this region, because the, ex the expected royalty rate is so large, the, the, the developer is actually very afraid of holdup. So if the patentee is lurking for sure, the developer says, well, I, I was not approached, but if there is a chance that there is a 
a patent holder out there, I'm going to I'm going to have to pay royalties that are so large that I, actually I'm not going to go with technology B. I'm going to adopt the safe technology. But if now the developer is adopting the safe technology, the patent holder gets zero because it cannot claim infringement. So it's not going to be optimal to lurk. It's going to be optimal to approach and collect some uh, payment. So that, that shows, that intuition shows that there is not going to be pure strategy equilibrium in, in this region. And the only equilibrium is going to be in mixed strategies where the developer is going to randomize between choosing A or B, and the patentee is going to randomize between lurking or approaching. Okay, so here in this little graph, you see uh, the, the probability that the efficient technology B is adopted. And you see that this is always one, even when the expected royalty rate is higher than the incremental value of the technology. But then here is a little bit lower because there is this mixed strategy equilibrium. Okay, so in, when the royalty rate is too large, we're gonna have this inefficiency in adoption potentially. Okay, and then I have a, a couple of extensions. Um, let, me, let me quickly go through, maybe not all of them in detail, just uh, mention a couple of them because I have only a couple of minutes. So the first one is um, what happens when the developer can invest uh, in, in developing this technology B, because in the baseline model, the, the developer has these two, two options, A and B, um, ready to, to use. But in this extension, we look at the case, what happens if the developer has to invest to develop technology B? Obviously, if technology B is already invented by the patentee, there is duplication of effort, which is already inefficient. But we still look at what's the impact of lurking on top of those inefficiencies. And here we find that, uh, which is perhaps not so surprising, but, but still uh, not the standard intuition, is that when the royalty rate is, is low, because in this region it was strictly dominant to adopt technology B, actually here lurking is not gonna affect payoffs. So it's gonna be still um, inefe efficient to adopt technology V and the amount of investment to develop this technology V is going to be efficient. So there's not going to be distortions. However, in the other regions, there are distortions. In the, in the middle region, there is going to be under investment to develop B. Uh, but if B is developed, it's going to be adopted. So a conditional on having B is going to be efficiently adopted. And if the royalty rate is too large, in this case, we have both under investment to develop B by the patent holder and also inefficient adoption because in this region there is mixing. Um, this uh, extension is, is, I think it's quite interesting, is um, look, looks at something called freedom to operate searches. Here's where a developer pays a firm to see and, and investigate whether there is a patent that is infringed. And what happens, let me just quickly show you this graph, is that the incentive to engage in this freedom to operate search is zero when rho is lower than rho bar. Why? Because in this region is actually strictly dominant to adopt technology B. So I don't care if there is a patent or not, I'm always gonna adopt B. However, here, uh, when rho is between rho bar and rho bar over lambda, this is the uh, rational ignoring patents region. Here, I would like to know if there is a patentee because I can, I can negotiate better terms. And, and here, when row is very large, I can also uh, get better payoff by uh, knowing whether or not there is a patentee. So what this shows is that uh, you know, for any cost of finding the patentee, there is not going to be search when row is low. Uh, and perhaps there is, depending on that cost, there might not be search when row is large also. And that relates also to this uh, other extension where in the baseline model, the patentee knew that at time zero whether or not the developer was gonna use A and B. So the patentee could always approach, but you can also think that maybe I just you know, acquired a patent and there are already products out there that I don't have the option to go and negotiate ex ante. Uh, well, in this uh, extension, we look at that case and we find that the equilibrium 
qualitatively is the same, except when the royalty rate is really large. In that case, the developer is so afraid of holdup that is going to choose um, that safe technology for sure. And why here is for sure and not mixing? Because this takes into account um, of the case where the, the patent holder is not being strategic, it's just it, it arrived late. So it doesn't have any option except just show up late and hold me up. So because of that uh, new possibility, now uh, th there is adoption of A, which is an inefficient technology, and that happens for sure. Uh, but in this scenario, we shows that the, the patentee would strictly like to um, come early. So if, if the patentee could pay to learn whether or not the developer is using technology A, a or B, it would always want to do that. But that incentive only happens when row is large, precisely to avoid this uh, inefficient adoption of technology A. So uh, combining these two extensions, this shows that even if we have the possibility to find each other to negotiate ex ante, that might not happen because none uh, the patent holder or the developer have incentives to do that. Uh, and then I have a couple of other extensions, but uh, in the interest of time, I'm gonna stop right here. Mm -hmm.